Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 13th of January. India's PM Modi inaugurates world's longest river cruise. Pakistan's foreign reserve dipped to three weeks' worth of imports. And Sri Lanka's ex-president Sirisena ordered to compensate Easter bombing victims. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday virtually flagged off the world's longest cruise, MV Ganga Vilas, for its first journey from Varanasi City. The cruise will touch major cities and tourist spots in eastern India and parts of neighbouring Bangladesh over 51 days. The world's longest cruise, MV Ganga Vilas, set sail for its first journey from India's northern Varanasi city as Prime Minister Narendra Modi flagged it off virtually on Friday. The MV Ganga Vilas will be covering 3,200 kilometers, encompassing 27 river systems over a span of 51 days. This will ensure that several tourism spots in India appear more prominently on the world tourism map, Modi said. The cruise, which has a total capacity of 36 guests, went ahead with its maiden voyage with 32 tourists hailing from Switzerland. With 18 suits spanned across three decks, it is loaded with luxury facilities, including a decorated dining space. Today, गंगा विलास क्रूज का शुभारंभ हुआ है इससे पूर्वी भारत के अनेक पर्यटक स्थल वर्ल्ड टूरिज्म मैप में और प्रमुखता से आने वाले हैं The longest river cruise will touch major cities and tourist spots of the country including Patna, Kolkata, Bodh Gaya, Majuli and Sundarban and will even pass through neighbouring Bangladesh's capital Dhaka. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Friday held a high-level meeting in Jammu and Kashmir to review the security situation in the region days after twin terror attacks in Rajori district which killed at least six people. He held a telephonic conversation with family members of the victims and assured strict action as his visit to Rajori was deferred owing to bad weather. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Friday visited India's Jammu and Kashmir and held a high-level meeting to review the security situation in the region in the wake of targeted civilian killings in Rajori district earlier this month. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha also attended the meeting. Shah was scheduled to meet the family members of those killed in the terror attacks in Rajori. However, the visit was deferred due to bad weather. He, however, held a telephonic conversation with them and assured strict action. Shah later told reporters the investigation in the incidents has been assigned to National Investigation Agency and the Jammu and Kashmir Police. He said that you will be given the protection of the While four people were gunned down by terrorists on January 1 evening, Two children were killed and several others injured in an IED blast in the same Dhangri village in Rajori. India has long accused neighbouring Pakistan-backed terrorists to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley, a charge Islamabad denies. In news from Pakistan, the State Bank of Pakistan on Thursday informed the country's foreign exchange reserve have dropped to 4.3 billion US dollars as of January 6 leaving it with the imports cover for barely three weeks. The central bank in a statement said this was a result of external debt repayment. Pakistan economic situation has continued to worsen as the country's foreign exchange reserves dropped by $1.2 billion to $4.3 billion as of January 6, leaving it with the expense cover for barely three weeks of import the State Bank of Pakistan, SBP, said in a statement. 
Net foreign exchange reserves held by commercial banks stood at $5.8 billion and total liquid reserves at $10.1 billion. The falling reserves have also devalued Pakistan rupee against US dollar and other major currencies. A local trader taking a dig at the government's inability in the prevailing situation suggested they should be allowed to function in open market setup. We have already reached default situation, he added. I dollar aaj ke din, uh, bank or open market ka 40 rupees ka fark hai. Jaan 20 rupees ka, 20 percent ka jaan dollar ka open market ka fark aaj hai. To aap kaha hai? Aap isko default ho chukhe hai. Aaj agar hum apni currency ki aivas, state bank of Pakistan ko kahe ki hume aap uh, hamara sona wapas kare. Meanwhile, the UAE has agreed to roll over the existing loan of 2 billion US dollars for Pakistan along with providing additional loan of 1 billion US dollars. The development comes after Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif met with top UAE leadership. Pakistan has earlier managed to get over 9 billion US dollars in a donor summit jointly organized by UN and Pakistan. The World Economic Forum has suggested the cash-strapped country, apart from an economic crisis, is also facing the risk of an humanitarian crisis owing to its constrained supply. More on news from Pakistan. Altaf Hussein, the founder leader of MQM Muttahida Qaumi movement, has termed the reunification of MQM splinter groups a forced marriage bound to end in a bad divorce. He said those who used to call him their father have betrayed him for the sake of money and power politics, but they will not succeed. Founder leader of MQM Mutahida Qaumi movement Altaf Hussain on Thursday termed the reunification of MQM splinter groups a forced marriage bound to end in a bad divorce, Pakistani media reported. Talking to reporters after a court appearance at the London High Court, Hussain said MQMP had launched a case against him at the London court to snatch nearly half a dozen properties from him. Those who used to call him their father have betrayed him for the sake of money and power politics, but they will not succeed, he added. MQMP's Khalid Makbul Siddiqui, MQM Organization Restoration Committee founder Dr. Farooq Sattar and Park Sarzameen Party's Mustafa Kamal reunited under the banner of MQM Pakistan on Thursday. Political commentators have termed the move of merger as major, saying that it will definitely affect the 2023 general elections if the party remains intact. Altaf Hussain had earlier said the Muhajir community will boycott MQMP in general elections to express their anger at them. MQM has dominated Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, since the 1980s. When security forces cracked down on the party in the 1990s, Altaf Hussain sought asylum in the United Kingdom, but the leader has remained vocal about political developments in the country. Moving on. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, has called on the Taliban to reconsider the decision to ban women from working for NGOs amid a humanitarian crisis. The Islamic Nations grouping called the ban a violation of the purposes of the Islamic laws. Expressing concerns about the current developments in Afghanistan, OIC, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, has called on the Taliban to reconsider the decision to ban women from working for non-governmental organizations. The OIC called the ban on women a violation of the purposes of the Islamic laws. In a statement, the 57-member nations grouping also expressed grave concerns over the worsening humanitarian and human rights situation in Afghanistan and called on the Islamic Emirate to respect human rights, including the rights of women and children. It also stressed the significant role of women in social and economic development and peace and security building in Afghanistan. In December last year, the Taliban issued a decree banning women from working in NGOs. The scheme after they had already suspended university education for women and secondary schooling for girls until what they termed further notice. Since seizing control in August 2021, the Islamic Taliban has imposed hardline policies, including that women must cover their faces in public and should not leave home without a male relative if they travel more than 45 miles. Foreign governments have said that the group needs to reverse its course on women's rights for any part towards formal recognition. News from Sri Lanka. 
Sri Lanka's Supreme Court on Thursday ordered former President Maithripala Sirisena to pay a compensation of 100 million Lankan rupees to victims of 2019 Easter bombings. The court observed there were lapses in communication within the security establishment. The judgment by the apex court is believed to provide a temporary relief as the investigation into the attack is yet to conclude. Sri Lanka's Supreme Court on Thursday ordered former President Maithripala Sirisena to pay a compensation of 100 million Lankan rupees to victims of April 2019 Easter bombings while pointing at the reckless negligence by the ex-president and his subordinates. The seven-judge bench of the Apex Court in its order observed there were lapses in communication within the security establishment and cited failures by Sirisena who also held the defense portfolio at the time of attacks. The court finds there was no meeting summoned for NSC, which is serious lapse having regard the nature of intelligence information received, the top court observed. On 21st April 2019, Sri Lanka witnessed multiple attacks targeting three churches and three luxury hotels across the country. The attacks, which were carried out by eight militants of National Tawheed Jamaat, killed 279 people, which was highest since the civil war ended in the island nation. Blame for the attacks has been directed towards the former President Sirisena after reports suggested he ignored an Indian intelligence information about an imminent terrorist attack weeks before it took place. The judgment by the Apex Court is believed to provide a temporary relief as the investigation into the blast is yet to conclude. People in parts of northern India on Friday celebrated the Harvest Festival of Lodi with great fervour and enthusiasm. Bonfires, dance, music and offering of sweets, crisp rice and popcorn are integral part of Lori celebrations. Have a look. People in India's northern Amritsar city began an early celebration of the Harvest Festival of Lori on Friday morning. Lori is a popular festival that commemorates the harvesting of the rubby winter crops. It is considered to be one of the most zestful festivals of northern India essentially for farmers, and is celebrated by India's Sikh and Punjabi communities. Teachers and staff of an educational institution in Amritsar were seen offering peanuts, popcorns and rice to the bonfire and sang traditional songs and danced around it to mark the tradition. Meanwhile, border security force personnel in northern Jammu and Kashmir also marked the occasion with a bonfire and distributed sweets amongst each other. They were also seen dancing and singing to the beat of drums. Sir, Shima, we are not here. The country is not here. We are 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 not here. Lodi is celebrated the day before the festival of Maghi, celebrated in the rest of India as Makar Sakranti. As part of the festival, people throw Lodi parties, meet friends, dance, wear traditional dresses and prepare wide varieties of savouries and sweets. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.